All right, hello everybody. How are you doing this evening? Um, <clears throat> I have to apologize. I have to apologize if I uh, if I start coughing in your ears. Uh, rip headphone users. Unfortunately, I'm not feeling so hot. I am uh, gonna do my best here to give you the best stream quality possible today. Uh, let me go ahead and turn this down just a hair. Let me know if that's too soft. Um, okay, so big announcements. One, you can see the hat. Oh, let me let me get the right direction here. We have branded hat. We have branded shirt. Uh, we have the official squeak of hydration water bottle. There's also a uh, polo over there that uh, I can't quite show you. Also, a uh, Christmas present from Wifey. New uh, earbuds. Uh, so you'll see those throughout the uh, stream. Unfortunately, I do need to get a uh, USB hub so that I can use all of my devices at once because I have a uh, lighting. I've got the HOTUS. I've got the um, rudder pedals. I've got the webcam, the keyboard, the mouse. Um, God, I can't even remember what the other thing is. There's, there's another USB device on here somewhere. Oh, yes, the microphone. I'm running out of USB ports, folks. Uh, front and back all totally filled, and uh, I sometimes my audio cuts out a little bit in my ears because I have to put the Bluetooth in the back so that I can have both the light and the HOTUS run from the front. <clears throat> and the metal of the, uh, of the PC case kind of gets in the way of the signal. So, um, hopefully before next stream, I'll have that sorted out. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so, today, uh, obviously I've been gone for a little bit, um, in part because I've been sick. Actually, in, in total, because I've been sick. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this flight started. Um... <coughs> So I'm going to go ahead and get it started in, in Toolkit, and then I'm going to put my checklist. Uh, Alright, hopefully you guys haven't missed me too, too much. Hopefully not too little either. <laughs> Alright, preliminary pre-flight procedures, battery, one and two, on. One, click, clicky. Uh, and then we're going to do ground power on. Fuel pumps should all be off. Uh, fuel, we can load our fuel. Let's see, fuel is going to be 6702. <clears throat> and then our loading today is going to be 145 passengers. And our zero fuel weight is going to be 57.5. There we go. Apply these load settings. <clears throat> We're a heavy bird today. <coughs> mm, pardon me. Uh, AP fire test. Sounds good. AP master on. Let's start setting up our lights. Nope, nope. Just about get us our flap open. There we go. All right, start. Go ahead and get the deers aligning. On bat, off. IRS 2, on bat. Off. And IRS 3, aligning. All right. 
Um, <clears throat> let's finish setting up our cockpit lights. We'll turn all of these lights down here in a minute when we're getting ready to taxi. But for now, we could use them. Um, okay, our flaps lever should be zero. Slats are tracted. <clears throat> Probe window heat is not needed. Uh, APU bleed on. Air conditioning panel, no white. Cross bleed set to auto. Uh, air conditioner temp as required. Generator one and two fault light check on. External power can come off. Electrical panel, all other lights off. Ventilation panel, all lights off. Preliminary pre-flight procedures checklist complete. All right, pre-flight procedures. Adheres on and aligning. Uh, strobe lights to auto. Wing lights on. We're going to turn our nav and logo lights to system two today. Seat belts on. No smoking auto. Arm emergency exit lights. Landing elevation should be set to auto. Uh, pack flow as required. We're going to go to normal today. Fuel pumps <coughs> can all come on. <coughs> Engine fire tests. Okay, and then radios three, two, and one can come on. And now we get to set up our McDo. All right. First, we need to take this to the data screen and this to pause in it. All right, we're going from KMCI to. AMCI to KDFW. <clears throat> Pardon me. Flight number today is going to be UAL 3719. Uh, we need our GPS monitor 3917.8. Ninety four, forty three point two, forty three point two, Austin Dex today, eighteen. And our flight level <clears throat> can be three four zero. <clears throat> Go ahead and get our wind climb. Okay, flight plan. We're going to be departing runway two seven. Via the Racer 7 departure, the Doza, <clears throat> we're going to go to W, Ebik. And we're going to arrive at DFW. Runway 13 right. The Jovum 4. Big transition. Okay. 
Okay, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> in the nav in the uh, navigation display. Okay, so what we're gonna do <clears throat> is go straight from missile to papa. Okay, so we will have to manually, we won't have to, I'm just gonna take that out. There's no reason to worry about that. <clears throat> okay, perfect. Switch that back to arc mode. Okay, so that's stiff. All right. In it B. And this is where we need our Tola screen back again. Uh, maybe 57.5. Uh, 29.7 for our center of gravity. Block fuel is going to be 6.7 tons. All right, we're going to do flaps one. Four, nine. Four, nine. One, five, one. One, five, one, five, four. Flaps going to be one slash down 0 0.1. Flex temp is 61. <clears throat> All right. That's our McDo setup. All right. Uh, let's set our altimeter, our current. That's our. Reads thirty eleven. All right, flight director is both on, speed in managed mode, heading will be dashed as soon as IRS finishes aligning. Uh, altitude is going to be set to ATC cleared. Since we are ATC, I'm going to take it straight up to 34,000. Uh, Anti-skid nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel all normal. Transponder. I set the absolutely stupid 1200 and set it to transmit right uh, in standby mode. Uh, beacon light on. And then we're going to turn tail left as we come out. So let's plan with better pushback. It looks like we're already set up. cockpit plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. All right, so that's everything dashed. Cool. All 
live map so I can plan my taxi. We are no longer in Vegas. We are now in Kansas City. <clears throat> All right, so we just need to follow this curve around to Charlie 8 and then take Charlie all the way down to Charlie 1. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. <sighs> Pardon me. Also, if anybody is interested in playing Stream Raiders, please let me know. Just pop something into chat, and I'll be happy to get it started for you. <clears throat> Pardon me. So connected, and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Parking brake released. Starting pushback. And you may start engines. All right, ignition, engine two starting. Hopefully, better pushback has me. I feel like it's going absolutely insane. I feel completely uncontrolled here. I am definitely inside. I'm, I'm definitely being controlled, okay. <clears throat> Speed brake. No. Excuse you. Why are you out? All right, engine two is started, starting engine one. Break set. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. And it's a positive start. Engine one. Okay, engine mode set to normal. APU bleed off. Flaps set position one. Round spoilers armed. Flaps set for takeoff. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see you next time. Have a on safe left. Flight. APU master off. That's us. All right, so let's turn on our uh, nose light to taxi. I'm just going to turn the dome light off. Let's turn down some of these floods, which I should have done earlier. Some integrals down just a tad.
Alright, release parking brake. Elapsed time run. Increase throttle to break away. Okay, flight control is full left, full right, full up, full down. Flight control is checked. FMA should be on nav and climb. Auto brake can be set max. Terrain on ND is not really required, but I'm going to turn it on anyway. Now, real quick, I'm going to... run our briefing. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, 
They'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those two three bottles you purchased to put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that you should, should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is drink cartridge. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows and knees and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why have an airline put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being planted, or your drink not being same goes for spill-proof coffee in teapots and cups of tea. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid to run their own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on the tray to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study. So you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20 percent fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight, because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley, and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salt skies with you again. Alright. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I did spend a couple hours making it. Um, you'd be surprised how much effort something like that takes. Alright, so we are just about to line up on runway 27. And we are fully configured for takeoff. So we're going to start the chrono. There you go. All right, engines to 50%. Stabilize. Flex. Rotate. That's a break. Gear up. Autopilot one engaged. Ground spoilers disarmed. Our nose wheel lights and runway turn offs. Bottle climb mode. We'll retract our flaps once we're above 190 knots. Go 
go ahead and turn on our anti-ice. It's awfully cold out here. Okay, speed checked, flaps clean. Go ahead and turn down these integers a bit more. And the floods. Because they're not really necessary. That's the one thing I don't like about Vulcan. Uh, I think this is either the sun or the moon. It's just like shining through the planet. That's uh, that's that's not quite ideal. I am not feeling well. I know that uh, I probably said that a time or two. That's why I was out all last week. Um, I'm, I'm still sniffly now and, and coughing a bit. <clears throat> I'm trying to suppress it as much as I can for the stream. Because I don't want to give you guys any subpar performances. So... In case you missed it earlier, the big announcement that we have is that uh, stream merch is here. If you're curious about that, you can type exclamation point merch in the chat. Um, I'm wearing some of it right now. Uh, you can see the hat already. Now, all the buttons don't come with the hat. The buttons are mine. <laughs> and then this is the t-shirt. Uh, there's a polo over there somewhere. Here is the official Squeak of Hydration water bottle. If you want to order that, you go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash rack attack. I think. Yep. Exclamation point merch. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Actually, I can do that. Uh, yeah, shop.spreadshirt.com slash rack attack. And it looks like today is the last day of that promo gift code. Okay, we're over 10,000. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the landing lights, turn off the seat belts. Now that we're up this high, I think I can go ahead and turn off my anti-ice. I finish uh, filling up my vaporizer here. Today we're flying from KMCI to Dallas, uh, to Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, <clears throat> that was uh, requested by Vipers. Uh, by Vipers. Uh, sorry, my my speech is a little uh, screwy today, obviously. Um, 
But uh, please, let me know what you think of the stream, of the audio, of me, of the merch. Whatever it is, let me know. Uh, I am curious to hear feedback. So you can turn the music back on. And we are cruising. Now let's see. Any status messages? Nope. So we are nowhere near actual cruise, but. Cruising is in the colloquialism, not the actual <laughs> term. Uh, let me know how the face cam looks. Uh, I know that you lose my right hand really easily it's because I'm up against the right wall of my room this is my right hand by the way uh, this is my left so I know it's kind of flipped on screen anyway uh, unfortunately like this is the side like I can touch the side of my room from where I'm at and I can't get my green screen to wrap without making it show up on screen so I have to cut my left side or my right side off, like right here. Um, that's just the best I can do there, uh, without completely rearranging my room, getting a smaller bed, that sort of thing. I have an absolutely enormous California king bed. Wifey refers to it as an ocean. Um, Let's go ahead and just just for shits and giggles, I'm going to run our Navit logo. Wait, the Navit logo should have already been there. The wing lights are also. Did I turn off? I didn't turn off nothing. Why? Why? Why is our tail? I thought we were supposed to have tail lights on this. Maybe not. I think I can, by law, turn off the wing lights now. But I don't have to, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> We're over 18,000 feet, so what I am gonna do is what I am supposed to do, which is change my barometers or standard pressure. Not that it would have changed anything for us, has it? Also, I, I'm not entirely sure that the Spreadshirt Shop can deliver by Christmas right now. Uh, I maybe should take that off. Yeah, I'm going to take that off. Special is already done with as well uh, as of earlier tonight. Unfortunately, that means I missed a lot of opportunity with uh, my shop, but it is what it is. We do the best we can. Um, also, I will probably have to take these out halfway through the flight. Uh, they have about a three hour lifespan, and I've already had them in for about an hour, hour and a half before the Good chance I'm gonna have to take these out and recharge them during the stream. Shouldn't be a problem. You need to get the proper bend into the bill of this cap. Otherwise, it's putting a lot of pressure on my forehead. <laughs> It does fit a little differently than the OG cap that I have over here. Um, this one fit a lot different. But 
That's not necessarily a bad thing. If you ask me, this gives me more advertising space up here. Which I don't really use to advertise, I just put cool little buttons and shit on mine. Oh, pardon me. I'm getting congested. Let me just try to do this. Uh, this is probably a bad idea. Um, I may wind up skipping tomorrow. Um, I'm already really not feeling good. quite a long leg. Big ass leg. And in case you guys are wondering, this is a real life uh, route flown by United Airlines. Uh, United Airlines flight 3719 flew last week. This is the real route that it took. I did have to adjust the landing runway slightly in order to get the proper connections in. But uh, once I did that, everything works fine. What am I flying through? I mean, just clouds. I mean, I'm over the clouds. Why? What do you... What did you see that, I, that I'm flying through? Did I miss something? Does it seem odd? It's like I'm flying through the fucking Shadow Realm. I don't know what the Shadow Realm looks like, but... Uh... Yeah, that is a little funky. That's because of uh, Vulcan. I have no idea exactly what it is. It's either, I'm pretty sure it's either the moon. I'm waiting for Maximilian Pegasus to say some shit. I, I have no idea who that is. still quite sick. <laughs> um, just not enough so that I could justify taking another week off of streaming. How are we from the same generation? I don't know because I don't know what we're talking about. But you've also got to remember, I'm going to miss a lot of pop culture references from my childhood generation because I was a book kid, not a TV kid. Like, I was all books and video games. I didn't really have much use for TV. We didn't even have cable until... Wait, oh yeah, no, I never watched yu gi -Oh. I never watched yu gi -Oh. yu gi -Oh was just the bastard little cousin of Pokemon, and Pokemon was childish by the time I was... By the time I was, uh on whatever version of TV I had at the time.
But yeah, I don't... I never really watched it, so I don't know anything about it. So I don't know how this is supposed to look like it. <laughs> I apologize. We're flying down south to Texas today. If I was feeling better, I'd probably make a second flight. Because, uh, honestly, I need more uh, content for YouTube. Right now, I'm only two weeks ahead. And I'd like to be at least a month. Unfortunately, I'm just, I'm not feeling well enough. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm kind of worried that I'm going to wind up crashing out halfway there. <laughs> this this chair is comfy. I can fall asleep in this chair. Not even a joke. I can lay my head back and pass right out. I've done it several times this week. Mostly because I am quite sick. Also, if you have any interest in playing Stream Raiders, just let me know. And I'll throw us into whatever they have going on. Vipers is too. Most everybody I know is playing Cyberpunk, despite the fact that it's supposed to be supposedly one of the worst things to ever happen to anyone ever, and they should never have been made because there's there's glitches and it wasn't ready. Speeches and it wasn't ready. You guys pitched to make them release it early. Meanwhile, also bitching that uh, they were crunching to get it released on time. <laughs> Come on, guys. You can't have it both ways. I got any of your attention away from Cyberpunk. I didn't think I was going to get anything this week because of Cyberpunk. Like, realistically, it's a pretty good time to be sick. Because I'm going to lose all of my uh, attention to Cyberpunk anyway. So I'm not losing nearly as much as you might think. I mean, I'm not losing as much more. Uh, to being sick. As you might think. Sorry, my my focus is is having a hard time, my man. <laughs> I'm here listening and loving you all the same times. Thank you so much, man. Uh, by the way, if the audio is off, let me know. If it's too loud, too quiet. If I'm too loud, too quiet, uh, music needs to come up, come down, whatever. By the way, March hat. We got the official squeak of hydration 
water bottle. I'm quiet-ish. There's not much to be done about it besides the sounds like we talk about the engine drone on a little airplane. Well, what I can do is turn the drone down a bit, turn me up a bit, and that should probably help just a bit. You know, just me adjusting the various knobs. And Listen, I don't have the filters that I can throw in real time to make it sound like I'm actually talking like a captain. I did have that on the uh, pre-roll thing that I did during our taxi, but that's because that's pre-recorded, <laughs> and it took me a couple hours to make. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> the immersion. I, I don't want to turn it down too much. I do. I do want the engine drone to be there. I do want you to hear the plane. Just because, uh, I don't know, because I'm an av geek and I love the airplanes and the airplane sounds and the war. Now you don't really see much, but. Try to get you a couple of flyby shots. <coughs> also, the uh, earbuds I got from my wife. These are uh, Bluetooth. I appreciate them very, very much. It's nice to not have to worry about more wires tangling me up everywhere. It would be nice if the uh, I had the USB hub for my receiver. Because right now it's plugged. I had to plug it into the back so I could get both my light and my HOTUS plugged into the front. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that means that, uh, that means that the receiver for my Bluetooth had to go into the back, and that means that it's going through a foot of metal before it gets to me, which is basically a Faraday cage. you're enjoying cyberpunk how's that going for you enjoying it i mean i know it's kind of a potato on older consoles and such i don't know how it's performing for you And you don't need to feel obligated to answer me either, by the way. Um, I'm just asking questions for the engagement. Man. We're about 38% of the way through this flight. It took some fiddling, but I finally got it to 60 FPS by resolution tweaking. There are some bugs, had to reset a few times. Graphics are a little meh. You know me, I play on medium setting. Yeah, you play on potato settings. You do play on potato settings, that ain't no lie. Oh. 
Whereas I try to play on the highest possible settings because I want my games to look as close to reality as possible. Uh, I like my games to look realistic. But I prefer, like if I've got to choose between graphics and gameplay, I prefer gameplay every time. Swing my arm a little closer here. Um, in stories, writing is banging so far. But I am a heavy diet of, but I am a, di a heavy diet of side quests, so I can be over leveled in clap fuckers. Okay, I mean that's fair. It sounds a lot like a uh, Bethesda game, if I'm being honest. Which I don't mean that as an insult, but like Skyrim, you know. People have been playing that game for 20 years, still ain't done with the fucking side quests. It's Neon Fallout, I'm okay with that. Fair enough. We're seeing nothing but clouds today. That's just that's just bad luck. That's unfortunate. I mean, this is live downloaded weather. Now it's not perfect. It's not MFS. Of course, MFS ain't anywhere close to perfect either. But. I apologize, guys. I know I'm not at 100%. I'm pretty far from 100%, but I'm trying to give you something. Uh, I didn't feel good about taking a second week off. Uh, I really felt like you guys, especially those of you that subscribe, you guys deserve some kind of content. I can't, I can't just not. You know what I mean? So... I I just I have to I I had to be here today. Um, definitely a last minute scramble. Uh, because I wasn't able to watch the time as closely as I normally do. But what you see is what you get. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're having fun. Uh, including playing Neon Fallout. I mean, uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077. Um, honestly, I think you can give it too much crap. I mean, look. People yelled at him for taking, uh, People yelled at him for delaying the game, right? And then people yelled at him for crunching. And then people yelled at him for delaying the game. And then they released on time instead of delaying again. But it wasn't ready on consoles. And now people are pit bitching because it's, it, it, it's worked on old consoles. And it's like, yeah. they just can't win. There's nothing they could have done to please anybody. And they're kind of a victim of their own hype, right? This, this is the same, I like to call it Halo 2-itis, right? Halo 2, so Halo was, it's not the best game of all time. I'm going to be honest. Like, it had, it was okay. But, holy shit, it was fun. Right? And it was, it was kind of, it introduced a lot of console gamers to a cooperative multiplayer and to massive, not massive, but, but 
to, to, to larger multiplayer battles where you're not talking about one-on-one -on -one or at most two-on-two. -two. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Ivy. Give us game now. Guys, it's not ready. Give it! Okay, fine. Here. This bitch is raw. You suck. How dare you? You fucking donkey! What are you? An idiot sandwich! Uh. But. Just so that introduced a lot of console gamers to a lot of traditionally PC based ideas. And so it was revolutionary to a lot of console gamers. Uh. So then. Uh. Halo 2, they, they spend a lot of time talking about it and getting people ready for it and just, you know, promoting it a whole lot of time. And it works. Everybody's excited. And... Yeah, the hype train was murderous, expectations were too high, and it was never going to live up to them, ever. The engine they used is a new in-house engine. I mean, this is more relevant to Cyberpunk, but, you know, the, the fact that I couldn't tell at first which one we were talking about. Uh, they were learning and building all in one go, after scrapping two years of work on the game and reshuffling teams internally. Yeah, exactly. It was like, people were expecting too much. The expectations were just too high for them to be able to, to make them. Um... And that was kind of the same story with Halo 2, you know? Uh, not, not so much that they were building a new engine. I mean, I think they did build a new engine for Halo 2, but it was still built on the original. It wasn't completely right. Um, but they, they changed a lot of things. They were trying to make it instead of almost kind of just a tech demo. It was it was how Halo started. It was, it was started as a tech demo. Um... They kind of tried to, to keep improving it and make some changes to make it more of a fully fledged game. And uh, the problem is, is that they got so wrapped up in their storytelling that they they tried to leave us in a cliffhanger. And what they did is instead of doing a proper cliffhanger, um, they just kind of came into the rising action, and then they cut the game. And this is a game that is, it's, its biggest draw, its biggest um, appeal was actually its story. Um, the multiplayer in Halo 2 was amazing. There's a lot of things they did right in the multiplayer. And it hooked a lot of people, but the story was what left a bad taste in people's mouths. Um, and it was that expectation, and then you get built up, and, and, and it's like you've, you figured out at the end, half the single-player game was kind of pointless and had no connection to anything. When you're playing the Arbiter, you have nothing to do with anything. Uh, kind of the same thing in... Uh, what is it? Um, not ODST. Uh, the Halo, Halo 5, maybe? It's the one where you play Spartan Lock half the game. And that's just... You spend half the game playing somebody who's fighting against Chief, and, and, and you've spent four games, five games, sixteen, however many, with Chief is the main thing. My cousins still say Halo 2 is dog shit, and the Arbiter was an insert mean word here. Yeah. Uh, no, that's correct. The Arbiter was terrible. Um, he, he was a stupid, pointless character. He, he delivered absolutely nothing to the plot. Um, except for generic bad guy B that is apparently slightly better than the rest. And not entirely stupid. Um, figure out what, what, is, what is this? 
Uh, <coughs> that's the thing. There's a lot of people who say Halo 2 is dog shit. There's a lot of people that'll say that. They're not. Tr it's not true, but it's kind of true. Again, the, the reason why Halo 2 seems like it's dog shit to a lot of people is because of the difference between what was delivered and the expectation. Kind of like No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is, even at release, was a really good game. Problem was, it was well short of expectations. It was well short of what they promised. And I think the same thing's going to happen with uh, Star Citizen, where it's going to wind up being well short of what they promised, and expectations are a son of a bitch. The only way a Star Citizen wins is by never actually releasing. Um, but if your if your cousins had no idea what Halo 2 was, and they played Halo 2 at the time that Halo 2 came out, guaranteed they would have had a much better opinion of Halo 2. They would have still said the campaign sucked because the Arbiter was still a dumbass and a stupid piece of the plot that didn't need to exist. Um, and because the ending was so abrupt and had no climax, there was no climax in the game. None. It was all just rising action. Halo 3 was where the climax was. And you can't do that. Not even in books. You can't do that anywhere. Every book has to have a climax, otherwise the reader feels unfulfilled, and they, they, they don't want to have read the book. They regret reading it, because there, there is no resolution at all. You don't necessarily have to end the story just because there's a climax and a denouement, but you need some kind of a crest, and then a lead-in into the next story. Right? So you can give people a climax, fall off, and then show where they're going to go to the next, the next fighting arena to, to, to do the next phase of the story. What you can't do is just keep leading up to the big fight and then cut the game and say, we'll finish it the next time. And you feel like you got bait and switch, you got half a game. It's like uh, Lord of the Rings, right? You may not beat Sauron in every book, but you beat something in every book. You may not beat Sauron in every movie, but you beat something in every movie. You, sur you surpass some obstacle. <coughs> Sorry about that. I know I'm killing people's ears today. I'm probably not going to stream tomorrow. Um, just because I'm, I'm really... You can tell I'm not feeling it. I'm, I'm not well. <laughs> uh, I apologize. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this bird on the ground in, in Dallas. And... Uh, I'll let you guys go so that I'm not taking up your whole night. Do we have... No, we have a headwind. Why are we getting there so fast? How far are we? About 58%. At 50 minutes. I don't know. I guess that's about right. Yeah, you're happy with your purchase and still trust CDPR. <laughs> yeah. They did consoles dirty. No, they didn't. Here's the thing. People made them do the consoles dirty. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with that. Praise them where they earn it. Point, point fingers where they fuck up. Because that's the thing. We should all... We should all be more... See, here's the thing. <clears throat> we should all be more careful about praising the things we love. We should all be capable of talking shit. <coughs> about
about the things that we love. Because that's how they get better. I mean, nothing is great if it's stagnant. Nothing is great if it's stagnant. And if you love something, if it's a franchise, if it's a if it's a movie franchise, if it's a game franchise, if it's a if it's a, a TV show, if it's a book series, whatever it is, whatever it is that you love, right? Even if it's a serial, if you're not able to criticize them for the things they're doing wrong, they're never going to get better. They're never going to change. You're going to get tired of it. And you're going to move on. You know. That's how it shows one of, the, one of the biggest complaints that people have about TV shows is they get formulaic. As they figure out the formula that works and they just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Right? So how do you avoid that? You avoid that by not doing that. You avoid that by criticizing them and telling them what they're doing wrong. That they can continue course correcting. You don't just pick a direction and go. You pick a direction and you go until you find out that you're doing something wrong, and then you move closer to where you need to be. You should always check and make sure that you're headed in the right direction, that you didn't just start out going the right way, but now we're kind of not, and, you know, whatever. We'll just keep going this way until we hit something. I know I'm... I keep saying that. I appreciate you guys being patient with my coffee. Um, and not, you know, immediately shrieking that I'm shredding your ears. I'm, I'm trying not to. Uh, no. That's gonna... Thank you. I don't need, uh, I don't need big penis pills or follow for follow schemes. I, I would prefer to remain small than to get where I'm going by gaming the system. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Not that you're really listening. You're just a bot. Uh, that's how the point. Ugh. Oh. we got to the top of the set. Took about 43 miles. Sometimes in the United States you can get bits for free by viewing ads. Uh, clicking on the diamond bits button down in chat. Clicking on the get, but get bits button and then click on watch ads if it's available. Most of the time for me it says that uh, it's not available. Try again later. And it's never available later. Uh, if you drop bits... If you, if you drop bits in chat, they're absolutely the best way... Right, right, right. Best way to tip the stream... If you don't have money to spend. Um, another thing that you can do is you can join Brave. Um, and join the rewards program. Uh, my, my affiliate code no longer works. They've discontinued the affiliate program. Uh, however, you can join the... Uh, you can join the rewards program. And... Uh, basically it'll show little Windows Toast notifications down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Every once in a while maybe once an hour. Uh, you can actually tell it how often you want to display it. I wonder if it's browser setting that blocks bits ads. No, I've, I've watched it. I've, I've tried on a uh, completely stock uh, Chrome. 
Yeah. Um, some people can, some people can't. I don't know why they haven't been offering them to me for like two years. But I've tried it on Brave, I've tried it on Chrome, I've tried it on Firefox with and without extensions. It just doesn't want to let me. Um, it also has to do with timing. Maybe it has to do with how many bits you've made over a certain period of time. You know, maybe I made them too quickly because there was a time when I was sitting on Twitch for a couple hours a day just watching ads uh, just to get the bits. And unfortunately that, it seems, is not something that they want me to do. Uh, they only want me to do that when it's benefiting the streamer directly, not when they have to give me bits for it. Um, which is unfortunate, you know. Um, because when they, when they do it to a streamer who is currently streaming, right, and it disrupts their stream for me to watch the ad, when I do it just to get the bits, right, it's not interrupting anything. And I'm deliberately choosing to watch it, you would think that would have a better return on investment. Also, I haven't shown the merch. Got my hat in. Got the t-shirt. I've got the official Squeak of Hydration water bottle. It is actually textured, and it hasn't rubbed off yet, which I'm quite fond of. Um, but I'm concerned that this is going to come off like a metal glitter. Um... And what's really weird is it even, like, shows through... The sparkling shows through the, the printed parts. So, I don't know how this is printed. But it's not totally... But it's not totally transparent... Or, uh, totally opaque. So, probably something like a dye sublimation, I think. I've also got a polo over there, but I haven't, uh, haven't opened it yet. So here's the polo. Uh, it's pretty nice. It just goes over the left chest. I know it looks like my right, but that's... Reversal. Ah, <coughs> 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 oh, sorry about that. Looks like we're about ten miles from the top of the scent, so I'm gonna try and. Oh crap. Okay, so I need to try and grab my wind data. Yay. Okay, and performance. Go to approach. Look at my Metar or DFW. The QH is going to be minor, minor four. Temperature uh, is going to be six. Zero five zero five knots. I'll put our decision height at two hundred feet. And we're gonna go down to four thousand. Start to set. Okay. Your big half as required, not needed. Uh, 
Throttles are idle. Good, good. Descent phase. Still following the nav. Got altitude restrictions in the way. So yeah, merch is in. You can hit exclamation point, or I can, I can just trigger the command itself. Shameless shilling. Uh, I believe the 15% off sale is over, and I don't think they can make it before Christmas, but it's possible. I did order mine just last week, and it arrived today. So uh, if you order now, they may still arrive by Christmas, but I don't want to promise it anymore. We've got an estimated time on route of about 13 minutes, which means we'll probably be in in about 30. Which is just about perfect. That gets us there right about 7 o'clock central, which is time for the end of the street. Uh, I do appreciate you guys all showing up and uh, popping into chat today. Hopefully, uh, I'm still hoping that I'll feel well enough to, you know, be here tomorrow, but I'm not hopeful. Um, I don't think it's likely. More than likely, I'm going to be out again. Um, hopefully I'll be back Friday, um, whether I'm better or not. But I don't want to go another whole week without streaming. I don't want to do that. We are above our descent profile. A bit curious as to why. Especially when we're below our target speed. But there we go, we've caught up to it. No big deal. a little bit of a crab. That's because we got 62 knots quartering headwind. That's a pretty good reason.
Oh, sorry. All right, so we're we're kind of just coasting down until we hit eighteen thousand feet. Uh, that's the next time we really have some. Oh, then we're just monitoring the plane, making sure it's not doing something stupid. What is the elevation of TFW? Uh, runway elevation is 607. I'm going to try and exit left on Alpha 4. <coughs> okay, sorry, I had to get all my ducks in a row for process of landing since we don't have ground control to actually route me. Well, we are under 230 knots. I'm going to go ahead and put out flaps one. Hopefully this doesn't land me in a wicked crosswind. I've never actually done crosswind procedures before. What, just preventatively? I'm going to go ahead and take out my earbuds. Oh my, okay, that needs to come down. Sorry about that. But I just didn't want them going dead while I'm on final.
Oh boy. Hopefully this lets me get down to 3,000 by missile. And I need to be at least down to 3,000 by Papa. Real quick. What more? Three thousand feet. There we go. It's refiguring everything for me. <clears throat> Breaking a bit so we can get down further. Oh boy, we gotta get down a lot. about 3,000 feet high. Uh, 2,200. Oh, and our deviation's growing. Oh boy. Oh, this isn't going well. Okay, now we're starting to come down. Oh no, we're not crashing. Uh, we're just high. That's all. That speed break here in a minute. Uh, 
to slow us down as much as possible. down to 3,000 by Papa. We're just really high. here. Why am I not getting an ILS signal? <sighs> there we go. Okay. As soon as we cross this, I'm going to hit that speed break like I just saw a state trooper. <coughs> Are we coming down? We're definitely past it. Let's hit that speed break. Sorry if I'm being quiet. Um, this is probably definitely a bad idea. I think we'll be fine. All right, uh, speed and managed mode, speed brake as required, flaps one at 230, approach when ILS is tuned. Uh, autopilot one and two both on. Localizer. Captured. All right. Uh, wide slope is trying to capture.
Okay, let's try this again. Now we should be fine. Yeah, the moop moops came. Sorry about that. All right, altitude can be set to go around once we capture. Uh, uh, uh. Here we go. All right, now we're back configured. Bob's two landing gear can come down. Ground spoilers are armed, auto brake is set, flaps three, ecam all green. Flaps full, auto throttle is on, nose wheel light to taxi, runway turnoffs on. Ball purser. Ecam no blue. I do not see the runway. Why are we flying level? Okay, I think there's a good chance we might crash. Oh, I see nothing. We're basically over the threshold. Oh, I'm too sick for this. too sick for this oh that's not even fair that just popped in out of nowhere that wasn't even loaded oh okay okay let's turn on the autopilot go to 300 feet Ow! <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what happened there. Probably because of the weather. I 
All right, let's go in here. Night plan. We're just gonna rival 13 right. No star, no via. Insert. Zoom out. See what we can't intercept. Oh, this is bad. Two, two, five would be three, one, five. Oh, boy. Not what I want. <sighs> oh, why well, are you borked? Okay, um, well, <sighs> no, get the fuck off. Oh, what has gone wrong here? I mean, this is undoubtedly something I'm doing wrong. But, oh my fucked. Okay. Well. Here we go, guys. too sick to figure this out. As I'm flying with full spoilers and flaps.
Okay. Drop my gear again. D. It's probably because of the... Probably because of the clouds is why I'm having such a low breakout. Capture that glide slope, please. I'm too sick to go full manual. Oh, you did not capture the glide slope. go now you're writing it down
Okay, now we're now we're cooking. All right, cabin check. Flaps full. Yeah, that's that's definitely clouds. Where's the fucking airfield? There we go, okay. There we go. Gotta get those to disengage. Okay, now we're on the ground. <sighs> Roll out, landing lights retracted, ground spoilers disarmed. Engine mode normal, flaps retracted. APU master on. Big alpha, not alpha four here. Open. You start. Brake fans on. Ooh. 
Okay, so that was really rough. I haven't flown that rough in a long time, but I'm sick and it was a night flight, so I'm going to take it. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I, I wish I'd been in better form tonight. Oh. Oh, that was really rough. Oh. <clears throat> way to golf. Donald to break away. Fort Worth is just an enormous airport, by the way. <coughs> yeah, that's Foxtrot. this why are there already things parked there let's try and just come in here Oh dear, nope, nope. They do not like that they put a bunch of fucking stock planes here.
All right, and parking brake on. <clears throat> Anti ice is off. Uh, AP bleed on. Engine one and two master can come off. One way turn off lights off. Those lights off. Beacon off. Wing, nav, and logo off. Seat belts off. Elapsed time stop. <clears throat> Fuel pumps all off. Transponder to standby. Big dues. I'm not going to worry about brake fan off, even though it still is technically needed. All right, adhers can come off. AP bleed off. AP master off. Emergency exit light off. No smoking off. Battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dallas Fort Worth. Oh man, that's actually lined up pretty well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for flying with me today. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be here tomorrow. I will probably be back on Friday. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, thank you so much for being here. Uh, for I hope you enjoyed the stream. Obviously, it's not a stream here. It's just a video here. Um, check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash arakatak, A-R-A-K-A-T-K. -A 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 um, <clears throat> obviously, I release here every Friday first thing uh, at 12 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I also release a Mega Man video on Mega Mondays, again, 12 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, so hopefully you hit the subscribe button. That one's free. Uh, I don't have any monetization, so I'm not going to ask you to, to join my memberships or anything. Um, I would ask that you give me a view and a like if you enjoyed the content. If you didn't, hit that button too. Leave me a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.